Hello, here's a video that will explain how we get from pictures taken with the uh, infinite jib to a 3D model. Um, so usually the first step would be to go through your pictures and uh, make sure they're all cleaned up. Uh, so by example, we'd be getting rid of the pictures from the takeoff and from the landing and uh, the pictures from the craft as it's going towards uh, its first waypoint. Um, the next step would be to go in your workflow and to align the photos. Uh, what you see here, this blue, big blue mess, is uh, what the result is from aligning the photos. So if we zoom in a little bit, we can see individual squares. Um, all these squares represent uh, a picture and its position. Um, if we turn this off, under it we can see the uh, sparse point cloud, which is created after the photos are aligned. Um, for, after this step is done, what we can do is we can go and place all our ground control in the photos. So we'll just pick one uh, one of our markers, filter by the markers, and uh, in the interest of saving time, I've already completed this project. Uh, however, I'll just show off uh, the steps as best I can. So in the photo here, you, we see a big orange cross. Uh, this is what we used to... Uh, as our control. Um, now that the pictures are aligned, and in this case we've already uh, found this marker in uh, two other pictures. So right now Agisoft is doing its best uh, to uh, place the marker, which is this uh, nice little gray flame here. Uh, so it's placing this as best as it can, and uh, we can go through all the pictures and refine its placement. Um, once we've placed our, uh, our markers and our pictures, what we'd like to do now is optimize our photo alignment, which is going to refine the um, the alignment of the photos uh, in the first step. So once that's done, we can then go ahead and create our dense cloud. So we just have to select the uh, the quality that we want, and then we're going to set it. Since this is a pit, uh, just a gravel pit, we're going to set it to aggressive. Uh, normally you'd press OK, but like I said, in the interest of saving time. Um, so here's our sparse, and this would be our, our dense point cloud. So as you can see, the, uh, the point cloud is a lot more fleshed out. Very detailed. And from here what we would do is we would now create our mesh. So we would go back into our workflow, uh, select the build mesh command. Uh, in this case, we'll select the uh, height field method. Uh, we're going to use our dense point cloud to create the mesh. And then uh, these advanced um, parameters we're just going to leave as they are. And then we'd press OK. And then we'd end up with this. So this is uh, just a colored mesh. Um, it's not very nice looking, but we'll, we can do better in the next step. Uh, so this is just a single color mesh as you can see and then we have the triangulated mesh if we zoom in we can see the individual triangles this is uh, what you would import into AutoCAD or any other kind of CAD software um, going back in our workflow we're gonna go and build our texture uh, basically what uh, building the texture does is it overlays pictures onto the mesh and gives us a very nice 3D model uh, so we're going to select the ortho photo mode, uh, use the mosaic blending mode, and then the advanced, we're not going to check the uh, color correction. Um, we'd press OK, and then uh, Agisoft would do its thing. Um, it's just going to take a second to load the, the texture. Okay, here we are. So now as you can see, there's a big difference uh, between this and the, the colored mesh. This looks a lot more detailed. You can actually see the individual grains of uh, gravel. Looks very pretty. And this is how you would go from just simple pictures. Oops. So just these simple little pictures to a nice 3D model. 
And now from here, what we can do, uh, in this case, since it's a, a gravel pit, there's a lot of uh, volumes that we could calculate. So I'm just going to go back to the single color mesh. Uh, we're just going to select the pile. Um, I like the lasso tool here. And basically, we just have to trace around the pile as best as we can. I kind of missed a bit of it. We're going to invert our selection and delete the uh, mesh that's surrounding our pile. We're going to reselect our pile. Go in Tools and then Mesh, and then we're going to close holes. Press OK. So basically what we've just done is the, we've closed the, uh, the holes on the bottom of the uh, mesh. And with our mesh still selected, we're going to go and measure the area and the volume. And that's how simple it is to uh, calculate a volume in an area in Agisoft. Thanks.